Come on, so good to be with you guys tonight. It's going to be super, super good. I'm excited. I'm excited. All right, so tonight we are continuing our series. This is actually the last message in our series of winning the war in your mind. So over the past four weeks, we've been talking about the topic of how to renew our mind. And so we've gone through the we've gone through a spirit, soul, and body teaching. We talked about how in as image bearers of Christ, we are made in the image of God. God is three parts. He's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so also we, made in his image, are also three-part beings. We have a spirit, we have a soul, and we have a body, right? Now the soul, another way you could say that is our mind, right? And so it says in Galatians 5 that the spirit and the flesh are at war over your mind so that you don't do what you want to do all the time, right? And we feel the struggle sometimes. The struggle is real. I feel the struggle. I don't know. Do you guys feel the struggle sometimes too? Yes. The struggle between the way of the spirit and the way of the flesh. So when we get saved, our spirit becomes completely made new, completely righteous before God. But our soul or our mind has to be renewed, right? Our mind has been applied to the way of the flesh for so long right? For some of us, like decades, it's been applied to the way of the flesh, just doing what feels good in the moment, doing what I feel like I should do, right? But now there's this other way that's been born again inside of us, the way of the Spirit, and that's this way. And our mind has to be retrained or renewed toward the way of the Spirit. So we learned that in James 1.21, it says that the Word of God, when implanted into our heart, is able to save our soul, so as we center on the word of God, we did an activation around the word of God. We read the word of God all together. If you remember the questions, observations, applications, we did that whole thing. That was amazing. And then last week, Pastor Nick took us through a very, very practical application of how to take our thoughts captive. Not every thought that comes into our mind is from God. And so how do we discern or what do we do with the thoughts that come into our mind? One thing that stood out for, to me from last week is that we take every thought captive, not just the bad thoughts that come in, but also the good thoughts, right? And we win that war in our mind by taking those thoughts captive, making them obey Christ. Was anybody blessed last week by Pastor Nick's message? Yeah. I was so blessed. There was like a few times this week where I was like, oh, what were those questions? <laughs> I like look at my phone. I'm like, this is so good. So tonight, where we're going to go um, is we're going to give another practical tip. Tonight's message is going to be, it's, it's going to be a little bit of, pro, of a prodding message, all right? So I'll just, I'll just give you that forewarning, right? In Psalms 23, it says that the Lord is our shepherd. And in verse 5, the psalmist David, he is saying how the Lord is our shepherd. And one of the ways that he describes the Lord being our shepherd is he says, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Now, that's an interesting phrase, right? Sometimes I've like I've heard Psalm 23 my whole life, and sometimes I just brush through that verse 5, and I'm like, yeah, your rod and your staff there comfort me, right? When I think of comfort, I don't know why, I think of like a stuffed animal, you know? <laughs> so I have this stuffed animal named Bongo. <laughs> I've had it since I was five years old. And uh, I just imagine, you know, your rod and your staff. I just imagine me giving a big hug to Bongo, you know? Uh, but the rod and the staff that David would have been talking about, David was a shepherd, likely, when he wrote this psalm. The rod and the staff were not necessarily like huggable items. Uh, they were actually used to kind of whack the sheep when they, when they were kind of veering off course a little bit, right? Sheep aren't the smartest animals in the world, and uh, sometimes they would veer off toward cliffs or t in danger, or they'd stoop down to try to eat something that would kill them, right? And uh, as a shepherd, you have to be on the lookout, and you actually... They would use the sticks to whack the sheep, and they would know, the sheep would know, oh, wow, that's not right. <laughs> it's probably not going to lead to my life being lived out in its fullness. So I'm going to stop, and I'm going to get back to the right way, right? And so tonight, I hope that this message would kind of, that the Lord, as our shepherd, would kind of use his staff to kind of whack us a little bit. Or maybe even just correct us and lead us back into the way that's going to lead to righteousness tonight, right? In Hebrews 12, again, when um, the writer of Hebrews is talking about how, to, how this community of Hebrews can live out the fullness of life in their culture, which is very 
against Christianity, he talks about the discipline of the Lord. And he talks about how only sons, the only true sons of the kingdom are those that are disciplined. And it's in discipline, it's actually how God shows us that we are his children. Like he cares for us so much that he would actually be willing to confront us on certain issues that are not gonna lead to our benefit, right? We all have those friends that are like, yes, men, you know, or yes, women, whatever it is, you know, whatever you want to do, they're just down for it, right? And you're just like, whatever you say is a good idea, right? And you just go for it, right? I had one of those friends when I was in Las Vegas, and I ended up jumping off the edge of a cliff. I almost died, <laughs> but it was, it was a good time. We can ask, tell that story maybe a little bit later, but we have those friends. But sometimes it says the book of Proverbs that the correction of a brother is actually better than the kiss of a fool, Sometimes you know really who your, who your boys, who your girls are, like who those people that really love you, when they're willing to look you right in the eye and say, hmm, dude, what you're doing, I think it's pretty dumb. <laughs> or, hey, that's probably not the right way to doing things, right? You know, maybe it'll come off a little bit nicer than that, maybe not as blunt if you're going to use that one, but um, at the same time. So that's kind of where I feel like the Lord's going to take us tonight. And right off the bat, I just want to say, like, this, this, series this month has been such a journey. And I just want to say, like, man, as the pastor of this community, I love you guys so much. And like, I am just so thrilled that I get to be with you guys and get to chase after Jesus with you guys. Like I'm looking around a few of you at this room, in this room, who literally I have seen in the past six months completely change your life 180 degrees. And I'm like, like God is literally... I, <laughs> This is weird, but I was literally like, I was on my knees earlier today and like about to cry. I just like, God, I'm so thankful that I get to do this. Like we get to chase Jesus together. And I'm looking around. I just believe in you guys so much. And so I love you guys so much. So um, let me pray and then we'll get into the thick of things tonight. Jesus, we love you, God. Thank you, Father. Lord, we make space for you right now, God. Holy Spirit, you're welcome. You're welcome here. Lord, we love you. We look to you, Jesus. You are the only one who's gonna bring us fullness of joy. In your presence, God, is fullness of joy. Holy Spirit, do what you do best here. Confirm in our heart that we are your sons and daughters. Convict our heart, Lord, of sin, of righteousness, and judgment. God, I ask that you would lead us in the way of everlasting life. We look to you, Jesus, and we welcome your presence here. I love you, God. You're awesome. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on. All right, so a little bit of a, a background about me is uh, me and my grandma growing up, we're pretty tight, okay? I had a good relationship with my grandma. Um, even though there was one time I uh, accidentally stood up my grandma, uh, not, not the proudest moment of my life. Got a phone call one morning as I was getting ready to get lunch, and I get a, get a phone call, Jared, where are you? And I was like, instant conviction, just like feel like the worst human being alive right now. I'm like, Grandma, I'm so sorry. She's like, I was waiting for 30 minutes, and you didn't show up. And I was like, I'm so sorry. She's like, okay, just meet me at the mall. I'll buy you a bunch of clothes. And I'm like, what? How does that make sense? <laughs> Literally, my grandma just reflected the nature of God so much. I'm like, wow, that is forgiveness right there, you know? Anyway, wild. So me and my grandma, pretty tight. When I was young, we used to go see movies all the time together, right? And my grandma, she was awesome. But she always had, she always had Diet Coke and canned lemonade in her fridge. And so when, before she would leave, she'd open up the fridge and be like, Jared, you want one? And I'd be like, yeah, Grandma. And she'd open up her big purse, put two cans in her purse, and then we're like sitting in the theater, and she pulls like one of these, you know? <laughs> you know? And then I grab, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like in the theater, trying to keep it real quiet. Somebody knows, and then like, this is awesome, right? <laughs> Just like, we're watching like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or something, you know? 
So good. My grandma and I were really tight. So sometimes I would go over to her house and uh, I would like do just odd jobs for her. And it was literally so fun. So I used to like mow her lawn once a week or she'd have me come over and weed. Like she had this beautiful flower garden. She just like would grow all of these flowers all the time, right? And it was just like, it was so beautiful. But in one area where she didn't plant any flowers, there were always these weeds that would pop up every year. So I remember I would like, I spent literally like a whole day just weeding this entire uh, flower bed. And so I'm down and I'm reaching and I grab this certain weed. And as I pull it up, something like flies off and like hits me. And I was like, what the heck? That's so weird. So I, I reach down and grab another one. Again, like it's, it's the same plant, but I grab it and it just sprouts. And like something is, I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, there must be like bugs on this plant that, that's like really gross. And then I'm like, you know, pulling one of these, you know, kind of like trying to make sure I'm feeling all tingly all over the place now, you know. And so I grab it again. And so finally I pull out my phone and I like videotape ones to see if I can get like what is actually flying off of this thing, right? And I get, and what I find is it, it was actually seeds that were flying off of this weed. And all of a sudden I was filled with a great sense of remorse because I was like, I literally just pulled up this one weed, but it just sprouted seeds for probably 15 more weeds that I'm going to have to pick next summer. <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> I'm like, there's no way I can sink down and find these, right? There's no way, right? But I was pulling up these weeds, but as I pulled it up, it actually sprouted more seeds. And I got to thinking to myself, like, what the heck? Like, there's literally beautiful flowers, like, right over there. <laughs> like, couldn't you just be a beautiful flower? Like, what's happening here? But how can, like, the most beautiful flower in the world and the ugliest, most dastardly weed ever, like, be in the same vicinity, right? And what I got was it's not about, it's not even about the type of seed that was sown, or it's not, it's not about the soil, right? It doesn't have anything to do in the ground. It's, it has to do with everything with the type of seed that was sown in the soil, if you sow the right seed into the ground, it's going to produce something beautiful. But if you leave the ground, there's going to be some bad seeds that find their way in there and produce a bunch of weeds. Now, where we're going today is I believe and I'm convinced that the mind is the soil of your life. Your mind in and of itself is not bad. It's not in and of itself bad, but the thoughts or the seeds that you plant inside your mind will produce either good or bad things in your life. Galatians 6, I don't have this verse up here, but Galatians 6, you can write it down. Galatians 6, verse 8 and 9 says something very, very similar. And in it, Actually, I think it starts in verse, in verse 6, Galatians 6, verse 6 through 9. But it starts off, and he's, the Apostle Paul warns the Galatian church. He says, do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. And I think he's so pointed there, and he's using such pointed language because there probably is an opportunity to be deceived. And he says, a man will reap what he sows. So if you sow seeds according to the flesh, you are going to reap destruction. But if you sow seeds according to the Spirit, you will reap everlasting life. And so if the seeds of our life are our thoughts and the soil is our mind, the question I have for us tonight is what are you sowing into your mind? And what might that be producing in your life. Are we sowing seeds of the kingdom? Are we sowing seeds of holiness, of love, of peace, of joy, prosperity, purity? Are we sowing seeds of God's word in our mind? Or are we sowing seeds of sin, of immorality, of hatred, what, what are we planting inside our mind? What are we allowing to be influenced by? Now, you might be asking yourself, okay, how do I know what I'm planting inside of my mind? How do I know? Like, what's a good indicator of the thoughts that are passing through my mind? 
And I would say a good indicator of what we are sowing, the thoughts that we're sowing inside of mind, of our mind, is what we are beholding. What we are allowing either in front of our eyes or into our ears, I believe has a profound impact on the seeds that are being sown in our mind. And so this verbiage, beholding, it comes from 2 Corinthians 3, verse 18. And this is what Paul is encouraging the Corinthian church here. The verse right before this, he just got done saying, the Lord is spirit. The Lord is the spirit. And he says, and we all with unveiled face, continually seeing as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are progressively being transformed into his image from one degree of glory to even more glory, which comes from the Lord who is the spirit. So you see here, he says, continually seeing as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are progressively being transformed into his image. As we behold the glory of the Lord through his word, as we behold the glory of the Lord in times of worship, what he is saying here is the more that we behold him, the more we become like him. And we see this played out even in the Old Testament. In the, in the Old Testament, there's this kind of confusing, a little bit weird story of Jacob, who eventually becomes Israel. The Lord renames him Israel, right? So Abraham was the first one that created a covenant with God, right? And then Isaac was his son. And so Abraham's grandson, Isaac's son, was Jacob, right? And he continued, continued on the covenant relationship with God in the Old Testament, right? So Jacob was serving his father-in-law, whose name was Laban, right? And he'd been serving him for over 14 years. And about after 14 years, he's saying, you know what? I think it's about time that I take me and my family and we kind of separate from you guys. It's about time for us to make like a life of our own. And so he's about ready to leave and to take all of the herds that he has been shepherding under Laban's care. But Laban goes, bro, are you really about to take all my sheep and dip? That's not going to happen on my watch. And so he says, let me make you a deal. You can take all of the spotted sheep or spotted goats with you when you go, but all of the uh, purebred sheep or goats, they're going to stand with me. And so he's like, great, good deal, right? So Jacob offers, offers that deal to Laban. Actually, he offers that deal to Laban. Laban accepts that deal, right? But Laban was a little bit sneaky. He liked his sheep and he liked to keep them all together. And so he, what he actually did is he removed all of the spotted sheep from Jacob's care. He removed all of them. So basically what that means is that there would be no opportunity for more spotted sheep to be made. All of them that he would be caring for until he left would be made, would be purebred. And so basically Laban was trying to mess with Jacob and keep all of his herds and sheep together. And anyway, it wasn't a good move for him, right? But the Lord spoke to Jacob. He saw Jacob being untreated fairly and he actually spoke to him. And he said to him, don't, like basically don't worry set up, he had him set up these almond branches in front of the feeding troughs where these sheep and these goats would come to mate and reproduce and give birth. And in setting up these pillars, the sheep, when they were giving birth, they would be looking at these pillars of these almond branches and they were streaked and they were striped and they were spotted. And all of a sudden, these sheep under the power of the Lord began reproducing, even though they were too purebred two purebred animals, they started producing these sheep and these goats that were spotted. And so these sheep, they're beholding these striped and spotted things, and then they were reproducing after what they were beholding. And I think that same, that same law, that same idea works out in our own life with we become like what we behold. We become like what we behold. And so the question is, what are we beholding? And here's where I'm gonna get, I'm gonna get really pointed and really specific. And I don't want to say all of these things to convict you or to say that you're like a bad person. But what I am saying is I want us, all of us, 
I love you guys so much, and I want us to live into the fullest life possible with the Lord. I want us to live into the fullest life possible. And I want us to win the war in our mind. And I know a lot of you guys, all of you guys, you want to win the, mi- the war in your mind too. There's nobody in here that's struggling with thoughts of hatred or gossip or jealousy or sexual immorality that is like, wow, like this is the best thing ever. Like I just imagined I would live this life. Like nobody is in here doing that, but everybody wants to be free, but we might be unaware to how what we are beholding on a daily, weekly basis might actually be contributing toward the way of the flesh and not the way of the spirit. Like we say, and man, I'm so guilty of this myself. Like, man, I'm like, God, I wanna be free from lustful thinking. God, I wanna be free from gossip and jealousy. Yet I watch movies five, six hours at a time that are all about gossip, slander, backbiting, that are all about sexual immorality, adultery, and I'm secretly kind of rooting for the person who's trying to take the husband away from that bad one. Like, do you see what I mean? Like, we're wanting to live this life of purity before the Lord, yet we are beholding all of these things that are so far below the standard that God has for our life. And, and this, this is true. This, this statement, we become like what we behold, is true. And we don't realize it, right? We don't realize it, but the soil of our mind is being literally spread. All these seeds of sexual immorality, all these seeds of gossip and hatred are being spread on the field of our mind. And yet we're trying to go back in later in the ground and go, ooh, I think that's one of them. Let me just make sure that one doesn't reproduce. Oh, let me go over here. Yep. No, got that one. Ooh, that was close, right? We're trying to go in after the fact when we open our Bible and say, God, would you uproot all these seeds? And God's like, dude, would you just, whoo, would you stop spreading all the seeds in the first place? Right? And dude, it, it, so it starts with these movies and TV shows, right? But and man, it even extends into the music. I was doing some research, like what are some of the top songs like in the secular world right now? One of them is literally called Kill Bill. <laughs> and it's about, it's literally about this, this girl who is like contemplating murdering somebody who took her boyfriend away from her. And then the, the song literally ends with, oops, I just killed so-and-so and I'm really like, sorry, I hope I never get fine. Like different things like that. And I'm like, this is what our world is listening to and probably thinks funny and it probably has a really good beat and you probably can like vibe to it and you, when you turn it up really loud, it sounds really good in your car. But like, do we understand the little seeds that are being sown in between those, Right? And guys, I'm not here, I'm not mad, I'm not pointing any fingers or anything like that, but I am saying, man, with where God is taking our community, there, we have to let some of these things go in order to pursue the way of Christ, right? Now, you might be thinking to yourself, you're sitting here like, Jared, but like, man, if I binge watch The Office all weekend, like, that's not a sin. Like, there's no... There's nothing, it doesn't say in Zechariah 14, verse seven, thou shalt not watch the office. Like that's not, you know, like it's not in there. Like Jared, this, this is a personal conviction for you. So like you shouldn't maybe like apply this personal conviction to the rest of us. Like I'll just do, and, and to be honest, like I don't really struggle with, you know, any things of hatred or, you know, sexual temptation or lust. I don't struggle in those areas. I don't struggle with attempting to gossip or lie or cheat or steal. I don't, I don't struggle with those things. So it must not affect me. I'm good. Like I should be able to watch whatever I want. And I would love to, to that, I would say it's not affecting you right now, but the seed that's continually planted and watered in your mind it will produce after its own kind. It will produce. And this is funny, it's not even like, it's not related and this is, may, may, yeah, this is not related to TV shows or music, but music. But how many of you guys have ever played the game Secret Hitler before? Anybody? 
Secret Hitler. Anyway, it's a game. It's a game where basically one team is trying to lie, like kind of manipulate the other team a little bit into thinking that you're somebody that you're not. And you try to like vote certain people off. It's like kind of like mafia a little bit, right? But lying is kind of like a part of the game, right? And so I'm really competitive. I actually really like that game. And uh, I sit down and when I'm Hitler, just like playing that stone cold face and trying to accuse everybody, right? And that game was like super, super fun, right? But all of a sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden, I was in like a class at Grand Valley or at like at work later, and all of a sudden this thought came into my mind, ooh, if I lied here, I could get this person to do that and believe that. And then that person would believe them because I just lied to them. And there was this weird sense of like excitement and thrill about lying to somebody. And I was like, huh, that's probably not right. That's probably not right. And this game, it was just a game. But what I was doing is I was like actually training myself on how to lie and manipulate people to do what I wanted, to, what I want them to do, right? And so this is, it's, Again, there's nothing like wrong or in the Bible about don't play that game or do anything like that. But I just knew in my heart this was affecting me way more than I would like it to. And if it's going to cause me to stumble, like I don't have any problem. I'm just not going to play that game. And I don't judge people that do still play that game. My friends still play it when I'm around and I watch and it's fun, you know, and different things like that. But I just know like, man, if it's going to affect my relationship with God, I don't want any part of it, right? I don't want any part of it. And so these things might not necessarily be sin, right? But if we, ha- we see in Romans 12, verse 1 through 2, I think we have that verse up on the screen, but Romans 12, verse 1 specifically, it says, Now, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let me see, I'm trying to find it in my notes here. Is it up there? Not yet. Okay. It says in Hebrews, I'm sorry, Hebrews 12, verse 1. Hebrews 12, verse 1, it says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So did did we catch that? Let's just read it one more time. Since we're surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. So I get get two things from this. One is that we're in a race and we're trying to run as hard as we can after Jesus and to finish this race in purity and holiness, to finish this race as fast as we can. And there's two things that can impede us when when we race. There's weights, and their sins, which can ensnare us. So their sins that we go and they like grab our feet and then we stumble in our race, right? But there's also weights that we pick up and put on like a, a backpack full of rocks. And it's actually not even making us stumble really, but it's making us run at a slower pace. And it's making us chase Jesus. Actually, it's making our our walk with Jesus probably harder than even God intends for it to be. And so my question to us today and my my encouragement for us today is, would would we take the writer of Hebrews seriously? And would would we commit to laying aside these weights these sins that are the, in the sins that also ensnare us, but these things that might not necessarily be sin, but when we behold them, they cast these ungodly seeds in our mind and in our life. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. God, how God wants us to pursue him in holiness and to be blameless before him at that day. And guess what? He gave us his spirit so that we could be holy and we could be blameless. And he wants to walk with us in this journey, right? But if we're gonna go to that next level with the Lord, if we're gonna keep running at a faster pace than we ever have, if we're gonna know and fall more in love with Jesus than we ever have, something has to be sacrificed in order for us to go to that next level. 
And my encouragement to us today is, man, would we have a heart like David had, a man that was after God's heart, that, that pursued him. He wasn't perfect. He actually fell in probably one of the worst ways that people can fall, but he, he was locked in. He received the forgiveness of God. His iniquities were blotted out and he pursued Christ. And you know what he wrote in Psalms 139, verse 23 through 24? This is what he wrote. He said, search me, O God, and know me. Test my anxious thoughts and see if there is any wicked or hurtful way in me and lead me in the everlasting way. Would we have that heart posture as a community that we would be so in love with Jesus that we would literally welcome his discipline, that we would welcome it, that we would say, God, I love you so much and I don't want anything to come in between you and me. If it means I have to cancel my Netflix subscription, then fine, I don't care. There it goes. See you later out the window, like bye-bye. If it means that I have to stop hanging around these certain people because they joke around in a way that's not contributing to purity up here in my mind. If it means whatever it is, God, I don't want anything to come between us. God, would you search me? I will search me, know me. I welcome you. I open myself up to you. Point out any wicked thing in me. Point out any sin inside of me, but also point out any hurtful thing in me. Maybe the thing that's not necessarily sin, but is going to hurt me in my relationship with the Lord. Point out those things too. And then what's his final prayer? Lead me in the everlasting way. Lead me in the way of the Spirit so I can walk with you. I know that the Holy Spirit's moving in some of your guys' hearts right now. And I know that he's moving in your lives. And maybe for some of you guys right now, you don't necessarily feel the most comfortable because <laughs> you're like, ooh, like, man, something's in me and I know something has to change. That is actually the Holy Spirit moving in your heart. And that's actually his hand of love that is reaching out to you. That's, that's actually an invitation from the Lord to say, come up here. You've never been this place where you're about to go before. That's actually an invitation into a more full relationship with God. It's gonna be hard. <laughs> it's gonna require a sacrifice. But speaking from experience and, and reading that book, if you read Hebrews 11, there's people in there who had to make sacrifices for kingdom, for God and his kingdom. It's worth it. It's worth it. It's going to be a sacrifice, but it's going to be worth it. Let me pray for us all as we close here tonight. Jesus, I thank you, Father. I thank you, Lord, that you are king over the heavens and over the earth. Jesus, I thank you that you gave us your spirit on the inside and your spirit convicts us of sin, of righteousness and of judgment. And we say as a community right now, God, we come humbly before you and we say, search us, Lord God, and know us. Lord, test our anxious thoughts and see if there's any wicked or hurtful way in us and lead us in the way of everlasting life. God, we wanna look more like you. Jesus, we want to behold you. We want to behold your glory and be trans transformed into your image. Lord, we love you, Jesus. We thank you so much for who you are. We honor your name. And if there's some of you, even right now, as I'm praying, keep everyone head bowed and eyes closed still. If there's some of you and you're saying, man, we're talking about this everlasting way, this way of everlasting life. And I don't even know if I've ever heard about that everlasting way. See, Jesus came to this earth as a sinless man and he lived a sinless life in order to pay for the sins of humanity. Christianity is the only religion in the entire world that has a savior, that actually offers a way out of your mess. You can never earn it. 
You can never deserve it. You can never do enough right things to be in right standing with God. And God knew that. And so he sent his son into your mess to sit, to save you from your mess and then clean you up. And if you're tonight, you're right now, you're saying, I don't even know maybe fully what this whole Jesus thing is about, but I'm feeling in my heart that I'm not right with God and I need to be right with God. My heart is convicted and I wanna give my life to Jesus right now. If that's you, would you raise your hand on the count of three? One, two, three, raise your hand. Thank you, Jesus. See hands going up. Yes, God, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. You can put your hands down. Thank you, Father. Come on. Would we all pray this prayer together as a community with our new brothers and sisters in Christ who've just rededicated their life to the Lord? We say, Jesus, I love you. Thank you for dying on the cross for all of my sins. Conquering sin, death, and the devil. Lord, I put my trust in you. I make you the Lord and the master of my life. I'm done with my life. I give it to you. I turn my back on my old way and I submit to the way of the Spirit. Holy Spirit, fill me and help me become more like Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Would you give it up for those guys? Come on. Thank you, Jesus. So good, so good. If you did, just raise your hand. Um, We're gonna dismiss into community groups in just a minute. But before you dismiss into community groups, come find me if you just raise your hand to recommit your life to Jesus. I have something I wanna share with you and also pray with you as well. So thank you guys.